Hey there. I've been thinking about health lately, and it got me wondering about the various types of illnesses that people can experience. What are your thoughts on this? Oh, absolutely. Illnesses come in all shapes and sizes, affecting different parts of the body and manifesting in various ways. Let's start with infectious diseases. They are caused by pathogens like bacteria, viruses, fungi, and parasites. Common examples include the flu, tuberculosis, and malaria. Right, infectious diseases are pretty widespread, but what about non-communicable diseases? I've heard that they are becoming more prevalent. You're spot on. Non-communicable diseases and CTS are chronic conditions that can't be transmitted from person to person. They often result from a combination of genetic, lifestyle, and environmental factors. Cardiovascular diseases, cancer, diabetes, and respiratory diseases fall into this category. That makes sense. I guess mental illnesses are another significant category. Depression, anxiety, schizophrenia, they can impact anyone, right? Absolutely. Mental illnesses are as real and impactful as physical illnesses. They affect a person's thoughts, emotions, and behavior. The stigma around mental health is gradually reducing, but there's still work to be done in promoting understanding and empathy. And what about genetic disorders? I've heard some conditions are inherited from our parents. Yes, you're right. Genetic disorders are caused by abnormalities in an individual's DNA. Conditions like cystic fibrosis, Huntington's disease, and sickle cell anemia fall into this category. They can be passed down from parents to their children through genetic mutations. It's fascinating how our genes play such a crucial role. What about autoimmune diseases? I've heard about them but don't know much. Autoimmune diseases occur when the immune system mistakenly attacks the body's own tissues. Conditions like rheumatoid arthritis, lupus, and type 1 diabetes are examples. It's like the immune system gets confused and starts targeting healthy cells. That sounds challenging. I've also heard about lifestyle-related diseases. Are those different from non-communicable diseases? Good question. Lifestyle-related diseases often overlap with non-communicable diseases. These are influenced by how we live, our diet, physical activity, and habits. Conditions like obesity, hypertension, and certain types of heart diseases can be linked to lifestyle choices. So, it seems like there is a wide range of illnesses, each with its unique characteristics. Anything else we should cover? Well, we could dive into occupational diseases, caused by the specific conditions or hazards associated with certain jobs. Then there are rare diseases, affecting a small percentage of the population. Environmental diseases are another aspect, arising from exposure to pollutants or toxins. Wow, I never realized the depth of it all. It's a complex web of health issues that people face. I appreciate you shedding light on this. No problem. It's essential to be aware of the diversity of illnesses to better understand health and well-being. If you have any specific questions about a particular type of illness, feel free to ask. Absolutely, I'd love to learn more. I'm curious about how lifestyle choices tie into some of these diseases. You mentioned obesity and hypertension, how do they connect with our daily habits? Lifestyle-related diseases often result from factors like poor diet, lack of physical activity, smoking, and excessive alcohol consumption. For instance, a diet high in saturated fats and sugars, combined with a sedentary lifestyle, can contribute to obesity. This, in turn, increases the risk of conditions like type 2 diabetes and cardiovascular diseases. That's enlightening. So, our day-to-day -day choices really play a significant role in our health. Absolutely. It's the small, consistent choices that add up over time. Regular exercise, a balanced diet, and avoiding harmful habits can go a long way in preventing many lifestyle-related diseases. What about infectious diseases? How do they spread, and what can we do to protect ourselves? Infectious diseases can spread through various means, including direct person-to-person -person contact contaminated surfaces, and airborne droplets. To protect ourselves, practicing good hygiene, like frequent hand washing, can be crucial. Vaccinations also play a vital role in preventing the spread of infectious diseases by building immunity. Vaccinations are so important, they not only protect the individual, but contribute to community immunity too. What about mental health? 
it seems to be gaining more attention nowadays. Absolutely, and rightfully so. Mental health is just as critical as physical health. It's essential to reduce the stigma around mental illnesses, encourage open conversations, and provide support to those who need it. Seeking professional help when necessary is crucial, and promoting overall mental well-being is something everyone can contribute to. I couldn't agree more. It's heartening to see society becoming more aware and accepting. What about environmental diseases? How do pollutants and toxins impact our health? Environmental diseases can arise from exposure to various pollutants in the air, water, and soil. For example, prolonged exposure to air pollution can lead to respiratory diseases, while contaminated water sources can cause waterborne illnesses. It's vital to advocate for and practice sustainable practices to reduce environmental hazards and protect our health. It seems like we need a holistic approach to health, considering our genetics, lifestyle, environment, and even our work. Speaking of work, what are some examples of occupational diseases? Occupational diseases are specific to certain jobs and often result from exposure to occupational hazards. For instance, workers in industries like mining may face the risk of developing lung diseases due to exposure to dust and particles. Jobs involving repetitive motions can lead to musculoskeletal disorders. Occupational health and safety measures are crucial in preventing such diseases. This is eye-opening. I appreciate you taking the time to explain these different aspects of illnesses. It's a reminder that health is a complex interplay of various factors. Absolutely, and it's a lifelong journey. The more we understand about different types of illnesses and how they can be prevented or managed, the better equipped we are to lead healthy lives. Thank you for sharing your knowledge. I'll definitely be more mindful of my health and encourage others to do the same. I appreciate that. Before we wrap up, I'm curious about rare diseases. What makes a disease rare, and how do they impact individuals and their families? Rare diseases, also known as orphan diseases, typically affect a small percentage of the population. Each specific rare disease might be rare, but as a group, they are more common than you might think. These diseases often pose significant challenges because they may not receive as much research attention or funding as more prevalent conditions. Patients and their families might face difficulties in diagnosis, treatment, and support systems. That sounds tough. Are there any notable examples of rare diseases that you can share? Absolutely. Diseases like Huntington's disease, amyotrophic lateral sclerosis, ALS, and cystic fibrosis are considered rare. These conditions can be debilitating and require specialized care. Awareness and advocacy for rare diseases are essential to ensure that affected individuals receive the support and resources they need. It's heartbreaking to think about the challenges these individuals and their families must endure. On a different note, how do autoimmune diseases like rheumatoid arthritis or lupus come about? Autoimmune diseases occur when the immune system, which is designed to protect the body from harmful invaders, mistakenly attacks its tissues. In conditions like rheumatoid arthritis, the immune system targets the joints, leading to inflammation and pain. Lupus, on the other hand, can affect various organs, such as the skin, joints, kidneys, and heart. The exact causes of autoimmune diseases are complex and can involve a combination of genetic and environmental factors. It's fascinating, albeit in a challenging way how our own immune system can turn against us. Are there any preventive measures or treatments for autoimmune diseases? While the exact prevention of autoimmune diseases is challenging due to their multifactorial nature, maintaining a healthy lifestyle, managing stress, and avoiding known triggers can help reduce the risk. Treatment often involves medications to modulate the immune response and manage symptoms. Research in this field is ongoing to develop more targeted and effective therapies, that makes sense. I've learned so much today, and I'm grateful for your insights. One last question, are there any emerging trends or areas of research in the field of healthcare that we should keep an eye on? Absolutely. The field of healthcare is continually evolving. Precision medicine, which tailors treatments to individual characteristics, is gaining prominence. Advances in genomics, artificial intelligence, and telemedicine are also shaping the future of healthcare. Additionally, the ongoing exploration of the microbiome's role in health and disease is a fascinating area of research. 
It's impressive to see how technology and research are pushing the boundaries of what we know about health. Thank you for this enlightening conversation. I feel much more informed and motivated to take charge of my well-being. I'm glad to hear that. Remember, health is a journey, and staying informed is a crucial part of it. If you ever have more questions or want to discuss anything health-related, feel free to reach out. Here's to a healthy and fulfilling life. Cheers to that. Take care, and thanks again for the valuable discussion. You're very welcome. It's been a pleasure discussing health with you. Before we conclude, I want to emphasize the importance of preventive care. Regular health checkups, screenings, and adopting a proactive approach to well-being can make a significant difference in catching potential issues early. That's a great point. Prevention is indeed key. I'll make sure to stay on top of my health checkups. Is there anything else you'd like to add or any specific aspect you think we should explore further? Well, we've covered a broad spectrum of illnesses, from infectious diseases to mental health, genetic disorders, and more. One area that often gets less attention is the intersection of physical and mental health. It's essential to recognize that they are interconnected, and addressing mental well-being is just as vital as managing physical health. That's an excellent reminder. Mental and physical health are undoubtedly intertwined. It's encouraging to see a shift in societal attitudes towards mental health awareness. Absolutely. Destigmatizing mental health issues and promoting a holistic approach to wellness can lead to healthier and more fulfilling lives. It's also worth noting the role of social determinants of health, factors like economic stability, education, and access to health care that significantly impact one's well-being. True, those social determinants play a crucial role. Addressing inequalities in these areas can contribute to overall community health. Well, I can't thank you enough for this enlightening discussion. I've learned so much, and I'm sure others will find this information valuable too. It's been my pleasure. I'm always here if you have more questions or if there's anything else you'd like to explore in the future. Remember, health is a lifelong journey, and knowledge empowers us to make informed choices. Take care, and here's to a healthy and fulfilling life for you and those around you.